Well guys, it seems the writing's on the wall. It may be time to say goodbye to Realm Royale, but there might actually be another option for some of you. Let's talk about this. Hey everybody, what is going on? Brandon here, and today's video is sort of a mixed bag. Some good and some bad. Unfortunately, I feel like it is more bad than it is good, but, you know, I'll let you guys decide that because everything is subjective. Now, some of you know, a few weeks ago, I did a video talking about how I was concerned about the current state of Realm Real and the direction that it was going. Um, I've seen things like this happen before with the games, and it just, it seemed like we were going down uh, the path of abandonment with High res Studios. And they've done this before. They're known for doing this. They did this with Tribes. They did this with Hand, uh, Hand of the Gods. Uh, they did this with their mobile version of Paladins, Paladin Strike. Uh, they're known for just straight up abandoning games. Um, so, I saw the writing on the wall that it was kind of happening with Realm Royale, and unfortunately it has gotten more solidified over the last uh, week or two, I should say. Uh, things have not gotten better, in fact they've gotten marginally worse. Because over the last two weeks we've just seen more stuff happen. We've seen Jay Nash, who is one of the lead designers plus the community manager, decide to leave uh, and go to Blizzard, which, you know, everything going on right now with Blizzard to Hong Kong, yes, they're, they're on our bad side, but I am happy for him that he was able to move on to a bigger company uh, and hopefully further his career because he was actually probably my favorite thing about Realm Royale. Uh, he was actually one of the people in the in the Realm Royale community that actually would communicate with, with the other players and with the content creators. So him leaving was kind of a bad sign. Then you also got a lot of content creators that have decided they're leaving. They they are they're seeing the writing on the wall themselves. Uh, they're uninstalling the game. They're moving on to other games now. This is mostly streamers. I haven't really seen too many YouTubers decide they're going to leave. Uh, but I have seen quite a bit of streamers over the last over the last month. I've seen quite a few. Um, but even over just the last week, I've seen more and more people decide they're going to uninstall the game and leave because they can just see the writing on the wall. There's also a rumor that the team has been told to pretty much stop future development on Realm Royale. Now, this is just a rumor. I have nothing officially confirmed, but all the evidence is there that kind of supports it. Uh, we haven't had any new voice packs for the newer skins. No new voice packs were recorded or voice lines. Um, they've just been either modified versions of the original lines or some of the other lines that have already been recorded. Um, we're seeing them put battle pass items in the shop to buy separately from past battle passes. That's never a good sign. Uh, and then this one on top of it, they just announced today that the Blorp mount, the one that was supposed to be a April Fool's limited edition mount, they cost 20, was a 20 or 25 dollars. Uh, that was only supposed to be in the shop for a limited time then. It was already in the shop for two months. A lot of us were complaining about that then. Now they're bringing it back for Halloween. Uh, that is not a good sign. You've got a bunch of people that spent $20, $25 on this mount that, because you said it was going to be limited time, and now you're putting it back in the shop after it was already in there for like two months. Uh, we were already mad about that, and now you're putting it back in the shop on Halloween. Uh... For, I'm going to guess and say $20. I don't know. I haven't logged in to see how much you're going to charge for it. But that's another sign that they're getting desperate. They're just putting out old stuff that they've already made uh, in order to make more money off of it before the game's fully abandoned. And guys, you got to think. Uh, High Res Studios, they just announced they have a new shooter game that's getting ready to come out. A new tactical shooter. Can't remember the name of it. I'll look for it uh, in post and get the video up above so you guys can see it and have the name there. Uh, but they just announced that last month. It looks decent. It looks kind of cool. It uh, looks kind of like it's going to be their take on CSGO. Uh, but so they're going to be focusing on developing that. And High Res isn't really a big studio. They don't have a whole bunch of employees. So it looks like they might be cycling out Realm Royale and bringing that team over to do the tactical shooter, or at least some of the members from that team. Uh, and the rest of them, I think, are actually leaving the company to go do other things similar to Jay Nash. Um, you also just had Riot Games announce their take on Paladins and Overwatch with their new team-based shooter that's going to be coming out. Um, this also makes me think that hi -res is going to be doubling down on Paladins. Uh, Paladins, they've actually put a lot of work into. Now, they have tanked Paladins in the past, uh, but they've actually been putting a lot of work into it, and I think they might be doubling down on that to compete with Riot Games' new game that's going to be coming out in the near future. But if Realm Royale does end up going under, I do have a slight replacement for some of you. Uh, it won't scratch all of your itch. It only vaguely scratches mine. Uh, but it is interesting because it's basically mobile Realm Royale. 
Now this game is called Ride Out Heroes. I know it's it's a pretty dumb name. I don't really get how it plays a part into this game. Uh, but it's done by NetEase. It's another one of those Battle Royale clones like NetEase makes. Uh, and then this one is actually based off Realm Royale, clearly based off Realm Royale. But there's actually mechanics in here and quality of life improvements that I actually like over the ones that are in Realm Royale. Um, so I'm going to go over briefly some of those. I'm also going to be doing a bigger video covering just this game in its entirety. Uh, probably tomorrow if I can find myself off of the Outer Worlds. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to give you guys a little brief summary of what I like about this game and why you guys should at least check it out, especially if you at least play some mobile games. For starters, this is a class-based battle royale, similar to Realm Royale, but instead of calling them classes, they're just called heroes. Essentially the same thing, because if you think about it in Realm Royale, each class is the same character, it's just got a modified version based on the skin. Uh, same thing here, except for they're heroes. And this... This totally isn't Aquaman. Don't even think it. This is not Aquaman. No way, shape, or form did they try to make their own version of Aquaman as a class in this game. Moving on. But there are quite a few more classes to choose from than you have in Realm Royale. You have your Assassin, you have your Hunter, you even have your Engineer and your Warrior, but then you have all these additional ones that you can unlock. So it's got a lot more customization when it comes to your playstyle. And gameplay on this is almost identical to Realm Royale. You have a mount that you can summon to get around faster. Um, you have abilities based on your class. You can forge weapons and items based on your class. But there are some actual really huge differences that I think that if Realm Royale decided it wanted to keep going, if they implemented some of these, would actually help the game. For starters, the forge. Now, the way the forge works in this game, as opposed to Realm Royale, is they are called sanctuaries. You don't actually forge anything. You pray for stuff. A uh, little small twist there, but they're not all open at the same time, and they're not all open all the time. Whereas in Realm Royale, you can go to a forge as soon as you got enough shards and craft whatever. Uh, in this game, you can't actually do that. They're only open during certain times. It will tell you which ones are open and when they're open and how long they're open. And you got to try to get to one of the ones that's open if you want to forge anything. I actually really love this because it forces people to engage. It forces people to run into one another. Because if there's only three shrines open or three sanctuaries open and four of you are going towards it or four of you are there trying to forge something, you're going to end up fighting. Whereas opposed to there's 20 different sanctuaries all over the map and you could be the only one at this one and forge everything you need and get through the entire match. Um, this forces engagement, and I really like that. I think if Realm Royale were to take this and adapt it to Realm, I think it would actually boost the game uh, substantially. I think a lot more people would have a lot more fun because it forces engagement. Another thing that they've got in this, which they actually had in Realm Royale at one point in time and got rid of for whatever reason, is class locked abilities. Now, this was in Realm. You could not, if you were a warrior, you could not pick up a hunter or an assassin's abilities back in the day. Uh, they changed that to where any class can pick up any ability. And a lot of us didn't really like that when they did it then, don't really like it now, but we learned to adapt. With this game, it actually took me back. If you're an assassin, you're only going to be able to pick up abilities for the assassin. You're not going to be able to pick up a hunter's ability or a warrior's ability or Aquaman's ability. You're not going to be able to do any of that. So I really, really enjoy that. And I think it also goes the same with class-based weapons. You, there are neutral weapons that everybody can pick up, but there are class-locked specific weapons. And I love that. Another interesting mechanic they added is sort of a prop hunt mechanic. When you get downed or chickened, you're not really a chicken, you're this little guy here running around on screen, I really don't know what to call him, uh, but when you get turned into one of these, uh, depending on if you found uh, one of these items, you can actually find a hide item, which is an item that goes in your inventory to where when you're downed, you can hit it real quick and it will transform you into that item and you can possibly hide from your opponent. Not very easy to do when somebody's right next to you, but it is really interesting to do if you can get away, especially if you've got a really good item like a, a, a plant or a barrel uh, and you can transform and hide, you can actually escape that way. Uh, interesting mechanic, gives kind of a prop hunt feel to Battle Royale. Not really sure it's needed, but it, it is interesting, it is fun. I would like to see them test this in Realm. It might not take off, but it's not a bad mechanic, so I would be interested to see it. All in all though, at the end of the day, this is actually not a bad mobile game. I don't play a lot of mobile games. I'm not a fan of the controls. The controls on this are kind of a pain to get the hang of. I'm not used to the touchscreen controls, but if you're somebody that's used to this kind of stuff, if you play a lot of PUBG Mobile, like I used to back in the day, I don't really now, but if you play a lot of these kind of games, I think you could get the hang of it pretty easily. And if you like Realm Royale, this game definitely scratches that itch, especially if you're laying in bed uh, and you don't want to bother trying to get the Switch or you don't have a Switch and 
maybe your wife or your kids have taken over the TV uh, and you just want to play a mobile version of Realm Royale, it's actually a pretty decent game. Uh, it is pay to win. I'm not going to lie. It is. Uh, there are pay to win skins and then you pay to level up your characters. So, I mean, you it is pay to win. So don't go into this thinking it's not. Uh, that I will go more in detail with whenever I do my full review of this game. Um, but don't go into this thinking there's no pay to win mechanics. It's a mobile game from NetEase. There are pay to win mechanics. But it's not it's not too bad, I guess, uh, if you're just playing it to have fun. Um, but guys, that's all the time I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video and you want to see more, please do me a favor and hit that red subscribe button. If you want to know anytime Nathan or I upload videos, please do me a favor and hit that bell icon so we'll be sure YouTube sends you notifications out. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in that Rideout Heroes review, please leave a comment down below. But I will see you guys next time.